are you? We are Venom. Hey guys, welcome to another edition of a preview. This time we'll be talking about Sony Pictures' Venom. I'm Julian. Oh, and I'm James, the instant you mentioned that, it just put me right to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to just continue talking about Venom. Um, so, Tuesday night, they dropped the embargo for the review embargo, which it was at a 29%. I think it's still at 30, 31 at this point. But, um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not thoroughly excited for Venom. I can't think of a good Sony comic book movie at, at all? <laughs> well, alright, so if we're gonna go that route, like, let's what what movies have they made that were comic book movies besides Spider-Man? We'll get into Spider-Man in a moment. I mean, that's all I can really think of, but... Like, they haven't done anything else with comic book movies in general. So, like... And it shows. <laughs> it, it really does show, and it's bad. Like, when they picked up the rights back in 98 for Spider-Man, I believe it was 98, and they did the movie rights. 2002 Spider-Man with Sam Raimi was a great way to start off comic book movies and kick off how we looked at movies. It, right? It's one of those things when, when it's your first time and you don't know any better, it's always good. <laughs> but I think, I think out of all the movies that came out in that era, right? Hulk. The X-Men movies. X-Men movies. Spider-Man... Blade 2, I want to say. Yeah, like the... the and early. Daredevil, and all yeah. of those, right? Oof. Out of all of those movies, Spider-Man's in the top tier. Yeah, definitely. And I think that with all... Like, even though the early 2000s was a very ex experimental year... Yeah. For, for Mark comic book movies, X-Men 2, the last... I mean, X-Men 2, X-Men United, and Spider-Man were the two that I would say, wow, picked it up, right? Yeah. Sam Raimi's take on Spider-Man where I, I still kind of am un, I'm kind of mad that they didn't make Spider-Man I mean Peter Parker really that smart yeah they did the organic webs instead of actually like he made his own shooters yeah I mean there's some couple of things I'm not agree upon but I love William Dafoe as Green oh, Goblin yeah I mean they, they, the thing is they know how to cast a lot of times they just don't know how to execute and it's it's, it's I'll say it's pretty bad when you have the original trilogy the Amazing series. I'm going to keep Homecoming out because it's more of a Marvel That's thing. That's Marvel things. Right? And then Venom. And even to this day, the very first two movies are still probably the best. They are. And I was <laughs> just about to say that. With Alfred Molina's Dark Doc Ock in Spider-Man 2, that was arguably yeah. one of the best villain character arcs we have seen in a comic book movie to this day. There's right? a lot of good scenes. There's a scene with like, him on the train without his mask and like the citizens of New York like... Like, we were, we're not going to tell anybody who you are and stuff. And like, like, there was some very great cinematic moments in Spider-Man 2. And I would say that Spider-Man 2 is probably the best Spider-Man movie after... I mean, out of all of the movies that have been made, right? Yeah. And would I put it in my top five comic book movies? No. No, maybe not even top ten. Not top ten. Because we had that many, that, much, that many good ones that have came out since then. But yeah. at the time, that was... Probably the one I would have been like hands down. Yeah, and like for, for its time, it's probably the best out there was. And then it, it's just sad to say like you've had all these other Spider-Man movies. Now they have a chance with Venom, who's a character that has a whole bunch of hype. Like Spider-Man's already one of the top three most popular superheroes in the world, and you have his number one guy Venom. Like that's right. And you get a guy like Tom Hardy, who's a good actor, very well known. How do you blow that? <laughs> See, and I was just about to say that. So for instance, like I thought Tom Hardy would be a good. At least a decent take on on um, Eddie Brock. On Eddie Brock, and so when Johnny and I did our podcast a couple of days ago, we saw that they were talking about like um, basically Tom Hardy's portrayal on the Twitter embargo because the social media embargo was lifted away before yeah. the view embargo, and they said it. This is the two extremes that they gave us. It was Johnny Depp's Jack Sparrow. It'll either be like that mm -hmm. and. Pirates of the Caribbean, like, Curse so of the Black Pearl, character. right? Oh, Curse of yeah. the Black Pearl, where it's that intuitive and he's yeah. that engaging, or he's climbing in Street Fighter, Legend of Chun Li. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> what? I mean, either he's... I'm gonna love or hate him. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. So watching the trailer with him in it, like he mumbles a lot. Yeah. He's like when he like he beats the guys up in like the community. He's like. 
I got a parasite. Uh, good day. I'm like, what? And then there's the whole thing. It's like, I don't know, man. It just it doesn't make sense to me how he, he apparently said they cut out the best his favorite forty minutes of the movie. When an actor's like, yeah, you know, I love this part a lot, and they took it out. It's like, oh, that was probably where he thought he was at his best. Something like how with Suicide Squad, how Jared Leto's like, yeah, they cut like all my crap out. <laughs> and that's why I'm like with at least with Sony that's what I, that kind of bothers me with all of their like comic book movies or any IP movies that they do they cut out all the juice they cut out all of the things that makes the movie what it needs to be right so like in a trailer granted I didn't like when Venom comes out and says you're gonna be like a turd in the wind I'm like okay alright but at least with the first trailer, it seemed like they were going somewhere with it. Like, Eddie yeah. would be something that I would care for. And now with everybody saying that it's mediocre, nothing in the story follows up. And, you know, it's sad. I still don't even know the symbiote that he's fighting against. What What's the name? It's, so, I can't remember. It's, there's a symbiote that's it's literally, like, a dark gray is its color. I can't remember which one I it is. I forgot the name of the symbiote. But I'm like, why would you pick the one that looks closest to Venom? Like, you could go with, like, an anti-venom. I still... I haven't looked too much into it. There's a whole lot of rumors that, um... Carnage might be in it. Carnage is gonna be in it, possibly played by, um... Not Harrison Ford. Uh... The guy from... From Han Solo? Yeah. From Solo and, uh, Zombieland. His name escapes me right now. Woody Harrelson. Yeah. Jeez. Um... I haven't even looked into that. There, there might... There, there's allegedly, like... Cameo from Spider-Man. Like... Okay. Which doesn't make sense even more... Because the way Venom works, the reason he looks like Spider Man is because he was a part of. I he don't was know. a part of Spider Man first. But then it's like, why does Eddie Brock hate Peter Parker? He's a little kid. <laughs> I don't know. There's there's so many things. Maybe it'll be cleared up when I see the movie, or maybe it'll be even worse. And I'll say, come back next week, and I'll be like, this was awful. Um, I just I don't know, bro. I'm I'm not at all excited about Venom. Like when the first trailer came out, I was like, eh, all right. This trailer come the second one comes out and I'm like, turn in the wind, <laughs> and that, that's one of the worst parts is like not only is uh, Tom Hardy hard to understand in a lot of parts of the movie in the trailers Even at least Venom Venom I don't really understand you don't all understand you like the only part that I really got was when he was like we are we are Venom which yeah <laughs> and, <laughs> his catchphrase and basically we was telling Eddie that we're in this together and I'm like if that's all I can get. This doesn't make it's, any it's, sense. It's like might as well cast like two mumble rapper <laughs> and just let them talk for the whole. Movie. And I'd be like, I don't know what the hell they just said, but one of them was Venom, and he beat up the police. Like I don't, I don't know, man. This this movie, I will not lie. Like I love Venom as a character, but I have yes. little hope just because it's similar to something like with Deadpool the Joker. I'm surprised Deadpool even came out well because that type of character is so easy to mess up just because you all you know, people think. All you have to do is just gritty, or for Deadpool, all you have to do is be funny and stuff. It's like there's more nuance to the character, and when you have just Venom, like just killing things and beating stuff up, it's like, is there any story in this movie? So like, I was just about to say, like onto that point, I hate to have to bring up this movie, but Spider-Man Three, right? At least Spider-Man Three, I will give it only this much effort. At least with Spider-Man Three, try to give us something to care for with Eddie Brock. You're an upfront photographer. You don't know how to pay for everything, so you scramble around Daily Bugle, stealing like stealing pictures and editing your own thing, right? Granted, it's a dumb background development story, but it at least gave me enough to be like, okay, that's why he hates Peter Parker. You lost your job against him, he ruined your life, and now you want to like basically get rid of Parker, right? What is his motive? That's you don't what I'm give like. him a motive. And he's just, oh, I'm a reporter, and basically they're doing these evil things, and I decided I want to be Venom. I'm what? Like, um, the only thing I can think is, like, technically it's the symbiote's motive of, like, trying to get back in there and take out the other ones, and, like, and Eddie's just along for the ride. Like, because there's no reason, like, unless he gets... Like, what can they do? Like, it's not like, unless they make him, like, lose his job as a reporter or something, but, like, even still, if someone, like, loses their job as a reporter because a making company shuts them down, it's like... Oh, I got the superpower, and I'm going to go destroy that company. Like, I don't understand. It doesn't make sense at all. So, like, that's why I was like, 
I was gonna say this like you're you have so many roadmaps to give you Venom. The best adaptation for me was Ultimate Spider Man's Venom mm -hmm. and how like basically Peter Parker became you know symbiote Spider Man and how that happened and then all of a sudden Eddie Brock just was a childhood friend of his and to find out that his parents are the reason why his dad is dead yeah. and all that. And that revelation, like a how deep seated he, hatred, deep seated hatred, and that just resonated with Peter, and that's how he became Venom. That was probably like, wow, that makes sense. I love that. Like you had a roadmap, you had that roadmap. You had the original reason why Symbiote became Venom's roadmap, where it's just again Eddie Brock was rivaling with Peter for a job, and then all of a sudden you get mad, right? Like you have roadmaps. Just follow the damn map. It's not that hard. Like, I just don't understand movies that, like, comic book movies, you literally exactly. have That's exactly what I was gonna the say. road map. Just follow the like, damn map. I try not to be that comic book fan who's like, oh, the movie has to follow it to a C. As long as you get their personalities right and get their motive right, you can take you can whatever take story. You you want. But, like, to have... It, it's the whole reason why I say a Joker movie without Batman doesn't work because they have to exist together. Venom without Spider-Man doesn't work and trying to force to work just because you have the IP is the dumbest thing and that's the reason their movies are constantly failing when they're doing these freaking Spider-Man movies. And that is why I, I said this before, Sony to survive needs to stay with Marvel and just do a collaboration. They just need to hold hands. They need to be a little kid holding mommy and daddy's hands. Help me, mommy, hey, daddy, mommy. Marvel. <laughs> he's actually, hey, mommy, <laughs> can you help us make another movie? Like, that's what you need to do because at this point, I am done. It's like Marvel's like putting like crayon drawings of Venom on the fridge, and then after <laughs> they leave, they're like, "Ah, this stupid it's drawing! Cute. Like <laughs> our kid's stupid. stupid." Like I don't know. It's I mean I, I it's one of the things where I never hope for a movie to be bad because I want good movies, but I just don't think that Sony's gonna give me any good comic book movies anymore. No, and that's why I say at this point, do do like 20th Century Fox guys. We're gonna give the keys to you. Do what you need to do because at this point, stop Sony. Yeah. Like literally. Hashtag stop Sony. <laughs> <laughs> like one movie I will say that I would be down to watch if they actually did do it. If Sony, Sony probably take this idea if you ever decide to do it. If you want to ride this wave, which will be dumb as hell if you ride this wave, what you could do is make a crossover and make Marvel actually do the crossover. Like, literally what you did for Spider-Man Homecoming. Mm -hmm. Give them the money to make the movie. All Marvel does is do makes this creative team go and make the movie with Venom and Spider-Man because to be honest, all of us have been waiting for that movie since Spider-Man 3 has came out. Yeah. And give us that movie and I promise you, we'll love you forever. I'll love y'all forever. I would not be mad at y'all anymore. But... Just give the keys back to him. I mean, we got Franco Goblin and Spider Man working together before Spider Man Spider Venom. Venom actually meshed. But now it. at this point, I'm like, are you going to have, uh, what's his face? Little Spider Man. Tom Hall Hall Yeah, Tom and Tom <laughs> <laughs> working together, Spider Man and Venom. I mean, I mean, the sizes look correct because Venom is supposed to be a hulking mask compared to him, but it's like, how would they relate? I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. I don't know. MCU can revamp the pages. I mean, we are going to get Avengers 4. I think some way, shape, or form, something could rehab everything. But, again, this is me wishful thinking. I'm just I'm just going to be this. I know I'm going to be disappointed watching Venom. We're going to talk about it, and I'm probably going to let you know I'm going to go in on this movie so terribly. But Maybe I don't going in with very little expectations will make it better. I did that for Fantastic Four, and look where that got me. Well, it's been another episode. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, but we'll give you our thoughts on it when we finish watching it. Are we going to watch it this week? I'll probably watch it this week. And I got, I'm got i on vacation right now, so I got time. I'll probably find a way to go watch it and cry. <sighs> so terrible. All right, guys. There goes our preview for Venom. Have you seen it yet? If you have, comment. Tell us what your thoughts on it. If you haven't, just wait until our review. We'll talk about it then. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Turn on notifications. We will have more content on the way. From all of us here at Stage 3, stay tuned.